In this video, we're going to cover the best ankle sprain treatment for a twisted or rolled ankle. And if you want to learn how you can rehab your sprained ankle fast, then stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica, a certified athletic therapist with over 10 years of clinical experience providing the best tips and tools for living a healthy, fit, and pain-free life. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So it's estimated that 80 to 85% of the population suffer from a lateral ankle sprain. This is the most common injury for the ankle. So let me show you on the anatomy model what this looks like. If you suffered from a lateral ankle sprain, the most common is the plantar flexion with inversion. So you can see on the outside of this right foot, this would stretch the lateral ligaments. This is the most common. So the most common ligament that's injured when you sprain your ankle is your ATFL. So what that means is your anterior talofibular ligament, and this is between your fibula and your talus. So this covers right through here, if you can see that nice and closely. So just like that. That's the most common one because that's that plantar flexion and inversion position. Then the second ligament that can also get affected with that inversion sprain is your CFL, so calcaneofibular ligament, which is on the outside and it goes from your fibula and your calcaneus. Those two can happen together sometimes, but the main one that's usually injured is the one in the front. And then we also have sometimes but not as often the posterior talofibular ligament which is your ptfl so just on the back here so going down from here to the talus there are very high reoccurrences with ankle injuries and ankle sprains so it's really crucial that you rehab your ankle properly with stability and strengthening exercises after an injury. So we used to use an acronym called RICE. It was rest, ice, compress, and elevate. We now use a different acronym, which is PEACE. So that stands for protection, elevation, avoid anti-inflammatories, compression, and education. So let's start with the P. So protection is for making sure that you avoid movements or activities that create more pain. So maybe it's walking or weight bearing right now. So we need to get you off your ankle and, and then elevation. We wanna have your leg elevated above your heart. So lying down on your back and having your leg propped up would be the best to help decrease that inflammation that is in the ankle and we can bring that back towards the heart. Third, avoid anti-inflammatories. What we mean by this is we wanna avoid anything that slows down the healing process. So we used to use ice quite a bit for the initial stages of healing, but really the ice is more there for your pain. Uh, we just want to allow the tissue to do what it needs to do in order to heal. Fourth is compression, and this is why we don't use ice as much. Now we find that with compression, we can actually speed up the healing process without impeding it. So I'll show you shortly how we'll do that with a tensor. And lastly, education. So the education is activities and exercises that I'm about to show you. So things that you should be doing and things that you should be avoiding. So without any further ado, let's get into these exercises. So when we want to add compression, you can use a tensor or a brace. This one, we're gonna use a tensor. You wanna start from distal to proximal, starting at around the midfoot, wrapping around, keeping tension on, and you wanna go tighter at the base, cross behind the ankle, wrap around the ankle a couple times. Make sure that the ankle is flexed upward when you're doing this as well, so it's not in that pointed position, so you protect the ankle. And then you're gonna go nice and loose as you roll up, and you can just tuck this underneath. So the next exercise we're gonna do is ankle pumping. So this is active plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So you're going to move your foot up. So your toes going up towards your nose, nice and slowly, and then pointing down nice and slowly. So you wanna do this about 20 times. It's important to have your leg elevated, as I mentioned before, have that leg propped up a bit higher so it's above your heart. In the first few days, it might be a bit too tender to initially do this movement, but as soon as you start to feel the pain subside or reduce, then you can start gradually adding this into your routine. So 20 times, nice and slow. 
The next exercise we're gonna do is a calf stretch. So you can use a strap, or if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a towel. So you wanna place it just around the midfoot, and then just gently, until you get to the point of pain, then you wanna back off slightly, because this we want it to be a very mild stretch. So this is to help stretch out those calf muscles that might be tightening due to that inflammation or swelling in the ankle. So you can hold the stretch for about 20 seconds, just gently, and then relax. I would want you to do this three times, and you can do this a few times throughout the day. The next exercise is capitals ABCs. So with your ankle, having it propped up so it's elevated, and so your ankle's not touching anything, I want you to spell out the ABCs with your ankle. So nice and slow, initially with the acute stage, you might not get as much range, and that's okay. As the days go along, you can gradually uh, try to stretch the tissue a little bit more and fill out the full alphabet. The next exercise is weight shifting. So if you've got an acute injury, you might not be able to put your full body weight onto that foot or ankle yet. So what I want you to do initially is you're just gonna add a little bit of a weight shift to one side. So if this ankle sprain is on your right side, then you're just going to be introducing the weight bearing on that right side. So most of your weight is staying on the left and then you're just gently putting a little bit of pressure down on that right ankle. In the next few days when your pain starts to subside, you can start to add a little bit more weight onto that right leg and you can actually maybe start to fully transfer your weight left and right. This is to get you to the point where you can start to balance on that one ankle. The last exercise we're gonna do is loaded knee to wall. So what I want you to do is slowly just, if you can't fully put the weight on that left leg, you still can have the full weight on the right leg. Have your knee on the left side go towards the second and third toe, just gradually encouraging that dorsiflexion movement in that left ankle while being loaded. You do this about 10 to 20 times and then stop. So this one you can do one to two times per day. So tell me in the comments below if you suffered from an ankle sprain and what you've been doing to help with the recovery process. So I hope this video helped you out. I never like to see anybody with an injury, but I'm always happy that I can be a source of reference and assistance when you are going through an injury and that we can make sure to do the things that help promote the healing and avoid the things that might make it worse. So long-term goal is prevention, and so I'm happy if I can be of some assistance. So if you like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, comment below, and let's get a discussion going about maybe your current injuries or injuries that you're suffering from and you want to see me cover in future videos. And if you know somebody that's suffering from a recent ankle sprain, please share this with them. I hope that this video can help those that are suffering and need some guidance. Also do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so you always get notified when I post a new video. And if you'd like more tips and tools on how to stay healthy, fit, and pain-free, head over to my website at jessicadudas.com and subscribe to my weekly newsletters so you get more strategies and tools for how to stay healthy. All right, guys, until next time, bye.